Hey yo guys, welcome to my WWE Cyber Sunday review. Sorry it's been taking a while, but you know, I was busy with school and you know, I just had to make sure I got everything right from the pay-per-view. So, Cyber Sunday started off with Rey Mysterio versus Finley where the fans got to select. They selected the stretcher match, so I got wrong on that one. I got I did terrible on picking the match type, but I think I did better on the actual match result. So anyway, this was a very good stretcher match. It Definitely top the earlier one we've seen this year between Randy Orton and Rob Van Dam. Got the same type of finish, but I'll get to that in a minute. So yeah, Finley. Uh, I like the part where Finley threw right across the ring and he landed on the stretcher. That was pretty cool. He threw him like all the way across the ring and he just landed on the stretcher. That was dynamite, guys. And then it was a gut buster by Finley on Ray's on the stretcher. Ray baseball started to Finley's nuts. I thought that was kind of funny. Uh, but anyways, uh, Finley used the shillelagh on Ray's knee because they actually had the like the, the match type on the on a pole match type set up in case the fans selected that. So I guess it does prove that the poles are legit. <clears throat> so and then Ray six one nine and then uh, Ray flipped on to Finley who fell on the stretcher and he did his sent flip senton onto the stretcher, or Finley who was on the stretcher. Uh, Ray got the win when. Uh, he uh, flapjacked Finley onto the stretcher and pushed him across, and yeah, so it was a very good match, a great opener for the show. Uh, happy they went with this one as first. Then the ECW title match was next with CM Punk versus The Miz. Uh, obviously, the fans got to select the winner, and they picked The Miz, which a lot of people are surprised still. I was sure as hell was. My face was. Yeah. So, anyways. Uh, the fans really weren't into it at first because they were chanting "You can't wrestle" towards the Miz, and they wanted Y2J. They were chanting Y2J during this. Uh, it wasn't a bad match. I mean, it was clear that Punk did all the work for Miz, but it was enjoyable. It's Miz's greatest match of all time, and the only person I can see who was happy about this match was Bob. He, he's, he was just pumped. This is his, probably his match of the year contender. Uh, just kidding, Rob. You know. But anyways. Uh, Punk had a great series of kicks, and he won with the GTS, so, I mean, at least we got to see him hit the GTS. Not much you can say other than that, and Punk wins. I thought for sure we were going to have a title change then with them voting Morrison in, but no. Then we went to the segment where uh, the fans it was decided who would face Randy Orton uh, later in the, for the WWE title, and then the two people who weren't picked would have an impromptu match. It was so obviously... Uh, Shawn Michaels got the dub in that one. So then we had the impromptu Mr. Kennedy versus Jeff Hardy. And who called it? This guy right here. Yeah. Everyone was like, how is that going to work? Well, I called it. Me. Mm. Anyways. So I had to brag about that. Anyways, Mr. Kennedy versus Hardy. I think their match on Raw they had a while ago was much better. But it was a good match. I got to say that. <clears throat> So yeah, Hardy was, he was not wearing his IC belt down. Did anyone notice that? He was not wearing the Intercontinental title. I thought they should have made this match for the IC title. It would have been a lot better if they did, in my opinion. <clears throat> uh, Hardy got the dive on Kennedy up to the floor. Uh, Kennedy hit a big boot to uh, Hardy, who, when he entered. Uh, Kennedy had a huge DDT on Hardy, and uh, um, Kennedy got the win when uh, Jeff Hardy missed his drop kick in the corner, and then he just... Uh, got the pin right there after Hardy hit the back of his head on the mat. And then later on in the sh like, uh, it was the next match was MVP versus Kane for the United States title. I don't know why you would make this the United States title when you could have should have made you could have for sure. Whatever I'm trying to say, I don't even know. But yeah, it was determined that Matt Hardy couldn't wrestle after he got busted up on the Tuesday taping before um, Cyber Sunday. In his in the tag match against Rey Mysterio, Finley versus MVP Matt Hardy. So anyway, it was MVP versus Kane. Kane had a quick start, but you know this was probably the worst match of the night. Uh, MVP was working on Kane's injured ribs after MVP uh, knocked Kane down the floor. Kane worked in MVP's room, which was something I did like in this one. Uh, like after the face got back in control, he'd work on the part where his he was getting worked on. I haven't seen that. I don't know if I've seen it before, but, or if I haven't seen it in a while. I can't remember, but. I haven't seen it in a while. Anyways, <clears throat> MVP got counted out after Kane pulled him between the bottom rope and he just pulled him to the pole and, you know, he got counted out. So, yeah, worst match of the night. Yeah, bleh. 
Then we had the WWE Championship match between Shawn Michaels and Randy Orton. Uh, great. You could feel the atmosphere in this one was very good, like a big fight night hype. I gotta say that. It was a good feel to it. I mean, it had great psychology with... Um, just great psychology and all. Uh, Orton hit the back suplex on the guardrail like he did in the Triple H at uh, No Mercy. HBK hit a uh, hit hard after missing the elbow. I mean, that was a big impact. Um, but Orton gets the DQ after uh, he, Shawn Michaels goes for Sweet Chain Music. Orton ducks and hits him with the low blow. Then Orton goes for... And then that's when the fans start chanting Y2J because Orton was setting up for, to punt HBK's head off again. Orton goes for the punt. HBK uh, Sweet Chain Music to Orton and the fans are happy. And you know, it was a segment. It was a good match, gotta say that. Then we had the street fight between Triple H and Umaga. Uh, they started by brawling down the aisle. I mean, I like I like this feud between the two. I mean, we all knew Umaga would get not get a win in any of this, but yeah. So they started by brawling in the aisles. Triple H tackled Umaga through the wall, and it was the TNA spot where you know that's this is the first match in a while I've seen them brawl in the crowd. I haven't seen a WWE match where they brawl in the crowd in a very long time. Uh, Triple H hits a nice DDT on a chair. Uh, Umaga splash on Triple H through the ECW announce table after he ran across the tables. And I just feel bad for the ECW guys. I mean, they get to call one match, and then the table gets destroyed on every pay-per-view. I mean, they're worse than the Spanish announcer's table right now. Yeah. Uh, but Triple H wins with the pedigree. It was a good street fight, and huge pop for the fans when Triple H went to grab the sledgehammer. So... You know, and he, I liked how he used it when she was officially going to use it. Umaga got out of the way, and then he got him with the shot. It was nice. Then the World Heavyweight Championship match, Stone Cold Steve Austin t took, uh, was the guest, special guest referee. And the World Heavyweight... Sorry, I, I was going to say Stone Cold versus Batista. It was Batista versus The Undertaker. The Batista Undertaker 4. Yeah, this was a great match. I mean, the atmosphere in here was like great near falls, great everything about this. I really enjoyed this match. Uh, I, th I just laughed so hard at the beginning when Batista went for the spear and Taker's like, what the fuck are you doing? And just moves out the way. <laughs> but yeah, uh, Batista won with the uh, two Batista bombs. Uh, I thought, you know, for some reason, like in this match, I knew he wasn't going to wasn't gonna win, but I just thought Taker would somehow get the win in this one, or they'd book it that way. I, I would have liked to see Taker win on this one, but you know, I don't know, whatever. Anyways, uh, my call on this one, I give this show about a 6, uh, not a 6, I give it maybe a 6.97, I give it a 7. Same as about Bound for Glory. Uh, well, I give it a 6.5 in reality. It was a good show, a much better show than expected, but I give it, I don't know, it's a tough one. I'm going to give it a 6.52. I can't determine. It wasn't better than Bound for Glory. Bound for Glory was better. I've changed my decision on Bound for Glory. I make Bound for Glory like 7.5. How about that? So that then WWE's Cyber Sunday gets a 7. One of the best WWE pay-per-views this year. Um, I'd say maybe it is the best. I think it's maybe it's not Judgment, not, not, not Judgment Day. Uh, Backlash good. Or I think it, it'll one night stand. But anyway, that's my review of Cyber Sunday. A very good card. Surprised the hell out of a lot of fans. And yeah. So anyways, uh, I'm going to be back with the DVD review in a second. So uh, keep it locked. Anyways, peace.